So hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. I am your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, The Powerful Man Matthews. What's going on, brother? Doing very well. Yeah, I'm sat in a bed right now. As you're aware, we've moved house um, in between sorting out offices and bedrooms and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, but I'm loving being here, man. It's just a, a dream to be living here. I love yeah. it. I yeah, it. good, good choice. You're a big three hours away from uh, from Leeds now. <laughs> yeah, three hours. Everyone's like, "Oh my god, you're so far away." It's like my mom, my mom was crying. It's like three hours, mom. It's not Australia. You yeah. Know, it's, well, it's it's but, a difference, right, between the states and the UK. It's one of the differences is you know we drive three hours regularly. Um, well, Having said that, it's not exactly true, but three hours away wouldn't be the end of the world. Uh, mm. for people to come visit. I had my dad and stepmom come visit us uh, for the Christmas holiday, and I think they drove seven and a half hours to give you an idea. No, uh, to give coming back context, next month. What to give that context, to give that context? I could drive from Leeds to Dundee, which is in a different country, <laughs> and probably halfway up the country in seven hours less. Yeah. Yeah. The U- obviously, the UK is tiny, right? I think the UK can fit. I think California is four times bigger than the UK or more than that. Um, it's crazy. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's United States, United States, right? So, like, kind of like the EU would be. Uh, anyway, man, what I thought we'd do, we jumped onto this in one. We said, hey, let's do a Facebook Live uh, for the guys. But, you know, 2020 has been kind of a joke for everybody. And also with 2020, you know, the powerful man is a movement. We've seen so much and we get the opportunity that most people don't. Uh, one is we've talked to thousands of business leaders. Two is the men that go through our programs are very well connected. Um, there's great guys and they're going through transformation. So we get the inside scoop on what's really going on. Um, and also we have the, the brotherhood and the inner circle, which are long-term mastermind groups uh, uh, for men uh, going through. So I thought what we do, Tim, is just take a little reflection on 2020. Uh, we did a little bit with the team, uh, you know, the other day. And so I thought we could dive into it a little bit and also give guys some insights on some of the things we've seen, some of the things that they're probably or could be going through, and uh, give them some insights on how we can help. Let's do it. So obviously, 2020 started out with a roar. We had some big goals for the powerful man as a movement. Now, guys, we think of the powerful man as a movement, not a business, uh, because it's really more than us and beyond our control. And what I mean by that is we really go out with the men that are going through the programs and we help, they actually help foster the way the movement's going to move and grow. Uh, for Tim, myself, Arthur, Mark, uh, Franco, uh, the whole team, Ben, I, I can list them on and on, Ryan, it's really about serving the guys. Um, and I'll, I'll get into that because we'll talk about some of the things that we did, but we had huge plans, right? You're talking about a bunch of men getting together and going, how can we make this the best year ever? And we rolled into the year like that, you know, a whole list, just like you would for your business. If you're in a growth phase of what you would do and how you would really get out there to serve more guys. And then COVID happened. It happened to all of us. Um, we had a little bit more of a, probably a head start to prep than most people because the insights that we got ahead of time on the seriousness of what was going to happen at a, a governmental level. Uh, but again, that comes with access, right? You just kind of who you know. But we had a pivot. We pivoted big time. Um, and so we went from doing that to being able to serve even more men uh, going through the program uh, after COVID was hit. Uh, one of the things that we did is we stopped all of our training. So one thing we do within the Powerful Man for alumni, guys that have already graduated the program, uh, men in the brotherhood, is we usually continue continued education, right? So we go through five territories, which is self, health, wealth, relationships, and business. I know I said that fast, but we do deep dives on subjects. And what we did, decided to do immediately was pivot, bring all the alumni together, and we did, gosh, Tim, was it two months of just topics on thriving through COVID rather than surviving? Yeah, it was. It was about two months from about, I think, April time to the summertime. Yeah, two or three months. Yeah, it was really cool because, um, you know, we look back and reflect. It seems so long ago, <laughs> right? But we had guys stepping in and saying, hey, look, this is what we need to do. Uh, we have one guy who involved in politics and lobbying 
I'll just say that. And one of the things that he talked about was, hey, how do we help our first responders? Here's what you can do, guys. Other guys were talking about, here's what's going on in my business. We have shutdowns here in the UK. We have shutdowns here in the States. It didn't hit the States quite as fast, right? But we knew it was coming. And what could we do to pivot? And here's what's going to happen in relationships. And so we started really tackling these issues ahead of time so the guys going through it could be proactive rather than reactive. Um, and behind the scenes, it was quite a scramble, right? Because you got to imagine having a one-year curriculum planned and then completely wiping it out and going, how, how can we serve the men at their highest level so the men could then serve their families, serve their businesses, mm. and serve their communities? Um, mm. It was huge. It was great to see all the guys come together like that as well. Guys from different parts of the world, Canada, East Coast, West Coast, the UK, Europe, and um, – just understand, get to understand one another's businesses and family dynamic and support, you know, especially when they had to do the homeschooling. A lot of the guys chipping in advice on that, which was really cool to see. That's right. Um, and it was great to be able to peel back the curtain on what we'd been, the information we'd been given, right? Uh, which was, I did honestly, I didn't believe it. You, know, you were you were adamant, and I was like, "No way! Come on, guys, that just sounds ridiculous." Um, but fortunately, we were prepared for what you said and what you shared came true. Um, so it was great to be able to share that with the men ahead of time, so they could almost bulletproof themselves. They were probably two or three months ahead of other businesses within their area. Um, because obviously they had information that other people didn't. And coincidentally, well, I say coincidentally, it's no, it's no coincidence, but you know, the, the guys, the majority of them, they've had the best year in business. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. They've had, they've had the best year, which not only the best year in business, but the, the best year as a family as well. Guys been pushed to cut their hours down from five days a week to four days a week to three days a week. And yep. then pursue their passions and it's resulted in guys buying RVs and going across the US, guys randomly taking trips up into the mountains, guy just all sorts of cool stuff that previously they were telling themselves, well, you know, when I get to that, that's when I'll do it. Obviously, someday never arrives, as we've spoken about before. And they always believe that none of the business cannot operate without it needs me. I'm the decision maker. You know, and then they realize, huh, I'm doing some four days a week and things are running better and we're making more money and the staff are happier. Hmm, maybe I'll go to three days. Then with a bit of a nudge and a push, they go to three days. And uh, doesn't mean that they take their eye off the ball at all. Well, no. Um, they just are able to perform at a better level, focus on their zone, what the business needs from them. It doesn't take five full days a week. Um yeah, I, I, it's so tempting to throw out names, right? Because we know these people intimately. But um, a lot of those guys, some guys actually felt really guilty, right? Because their business, one guy's business more than doubled. Um, and he had guilt around it. And so we worked with him on that. Uh, other guys had their entire industry shut down. Yet we worked with them on how to pivot that and make that a win. Um, so while their competitors were closing their doors, they were opening up new opportunities. And again, you go into the relationship, right? Now, all of a sudden, you got guys who, some guys are struggling in their marriage or were struggling in their marriage, and now they're home all the time. Like, oh, wow, now that opens up a whole can of worms. There's no hiding. But they flipped that script, right? We had one guy who got, <laughs> who got laid five nights in a row, right, right after this, and, you know, turned himself into the CFO of his family, uh, rolling through, where previously, that wasn't even a, a glimpse in his mind. Right, it wasn't even a desire to step away. I think it was five times in one night. Was it five times in one night? Yeah, because <laughs> I mean, he went from like a sexless marriage, right, to five times in yeah. one night. So I mean, these we talk about twenty twenty. It's easy to joke about how bad it was because it wasn't good. But guys, it's what you make of it. It's like your marriage now, today, or your business today. Um, and twenty twenty taught me something, Tim. That. Well, I guess it didn't teach it to me, but you know how you, you hear something, you believe it, but until you experience it at an extreme level, like skydiving, for example, until you actually jump out of a plane, you don't really know what it feels like or what it is, right? And when you actually do jump out of a plane, 
you get it, you never forget it. 2020 was like that for me with a whole concept I think Jim Rome came up with, with you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, right? Mm. So if we believe that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, 2020 really had people see who they were with. And that's where I saw the alumni and more in particular, the brotherhood and then the inner circle guys, right? The more advanced groups, they excelled. And I think that was huge. I love to think it was us, but I really think it was the brotherhood itself, that the guys coming together. Now you're spending time even more so maybe with other men operating at a very high level who have been through the programs, who have reactivated, gone through the activation method. They've reactivated the men that they are, the powerful men. And now you're spending time with these guys uh, virtually, but you're spending time with them. And now you're becoming the product of the five people you spend the most time with. And that's why almost all the business, best years ever in business, best years in relationships turned into themselves, right? You always talk about flipping the triangle upside down. They made self a huge priority and everything started to fall into alignment. Yeah. Uh, people rekindled all kinds of relationships. I mean, I feel like I can go on and on. Uh, it's fun to reminisce because you don't really stop and think about it until we do something like this. Yeah, and it's um, it's easy to say, right? It's easy, you know, I speak to guys every day that apply to the program and you know, I'm very grateful for the fact that, you know, the majority of those guys have you know, consumed a lot of our content, be it podcasts, go on the website, jump in the Facebook group. So, you know, it's not, they're familiar with what we're saying. And if you, you know, if you're listening to this or watching this and you've been around us for any length of time, you know, we're not saying anything new here, right? It's from what we've spoken about in the past. So there's a very, there's a big difference between knowing and doing. And oh, I think that's yeah. what this year, 2021, 2021 uh, it's funny. Uh, on a side note, have you seen that film on Netflix, 2020? I haven't watched it. No, no I saw 2020 so bad they named it twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, the point being is it's really been a magnifying glass, right? You know, you talk about money being a magnifying glass. You're struggling there, Doug. You talk about money being a magnifying glass. Uh, COVID has been a magnifying glass. You know, it's really brought to the surface. If there's been fragilities in a relationship, brought to the surface. Uh, surface. Fragilities in a business, brought to the surface. Fragility is in your routines, brought to the surface, right? It's been the time when, as men, we've been called to lead ourselves, our families, our businesses, our communities more than ever, maybe before, especially post-war, really. Oh, yeah. So point being is when we talk about flipping the triangle on its head and living from the inside out versus the outside in on the path of power versus the path of force, you know, one guy he was presenting the end of year to his board of uh, to his investors, all the shareholders in the company. And these were, you know, kind of old school guys in the 60s, some of them early 70s, been around the block a few decades, very well schooled in business. And this company, had, I don't know if it had 2x or 3x, but it had its record year. And uh, they were saying to him, well, How have you done this? How have you turned this around? <laughs> and uh, he said, Honestly, it's the first year I've actually spent more time focusing on myself than on the business. And he was really nervous as to how that was going to be received by those guys. These are his investors, right? Yep. And they, they were blown away by it. They were going, oh, man, I love that. Tell me more. And, you know, the proof's in the pudding, like, man, right? Yeah, he's taking on fitness challenges. And by the way, this guy has gone through a divorce as well. He came to the program. And unfortunately, it was a little bit too late to, to save his marriage. Mm -hmm. um, but he's thrived through it. He's continued with us in the Brotherhood, obviously, and he's, he's thrived. He literally joined the program about a year ago. Yeah. Um, and then he came out of the program around March time and then you know continued with us in the Brotherhood. But point being is the man that he has grown into, the man that he always was, right? But now he's actually realized him for himself and grown into that that guy he's been able to be there for his daughter and his son during not only covid but when i say covid his daughter then having to have time at home his kid having to be homeschooled and his son rather and it's brought a lot of problems for teenagers 
you know. Yeah. Um, anyway, without going into detail, he's been able to be there for his kids in a way that he, you know, he, he wouldn't have otherwise been able to be there for his business, taking on fitness challenges, crushing his fitness. All when the odds were completely stacked against him. So the big lesson for me, well, one of the big lessons for me in 2020, two on this point. One is it's really been a magnifying glass more than any other year. And uh, I've not yet reviewed the year, so I'm going to do that uh, over the next couple of days because you know, moving and blah, 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 a little bit behind. But anyway, point being is, um, as I reflect now in this conversation, it really has. It's how how have you responded? You know, have you reacted or responded? And that leads on to my second lesson in with being flexible versus being fixed. You know, there were there were times in this year for me where I definitely felt like I was too fixed to a way of operating, which had I continued to remain so fixed might have got me in trouble, was in trouble. Um, but feeding back to your other lesson, you know, the power of me being around guys like you and Arthur and the guys on the team is in those moments where I've wanted to resist and stay true to what I know, although what I knew worked in a completely different world. But, you know, you guys have been able to be around me and, and support me in continuing to be flexible. There have been so many times this year when we've had to harness that flexibility on a whim and just and just go and just pivot. And, the, you know, that lesson there of fixed versus flexed and the people you're around has just, again, I knew it. Coming into 2020, I, I knew it. But that's what I mean. 2020 has been the magnifying glass that's, okay, you know all these things, dear. Right. Let's see how you put them into practice. Yeah. Yeah. I it's, mean, we got something. You get the front line, so you get to talk to, to a lot more guys than I do. I, I talk to them once they get in the program or, or maybe through the Facebook group, like doing things like this. Um, but we saw so many commonalities with 2020, right? I mean... The, the kind of the idea which people talk about, which is not a fun thing, uh, but you see it with that reflection of the magnifying glass. And, and uh, as Jeremy in the Facebook group said, yeah, there's no hiding. Um, you know, the divorce rate is predicted to go up dramatically once things open up, uh, unfortunately. And we see that because we talk to guys and, you know, you can kind of predict it. Like, look, as you're, you walk in the room, as your wife throw down, put down her cell phone quickly, right? Uh, you know, that's a sign of an emotional affair that could be happening, maybe a physical one. You know, are you, were you hiding out in business and now you can't? And guys not having a chance to reactivate themselves or going through, you know, we, you know, we shared, I'll, I'll digress a little bit. One of the things we did in 2020, Tim, that I thought was really cool is we decided to put on a, th a free 30-day program. For anybody that was interested, all they had to do, uh, they had to be a business owner. That was what we stipulated. Uh, some guys, we let them in that weren't business owners because we just decided to. But the only thing they had to do is raise their hand before a certain date, right? And we just said, hey, we'll give you like a, I don't know if we can, we give them a two-week notice. You have two weeks, jump in, raise your hand. We're going to throw you in a private group, 30 days, going to give you some coaching on the triad of connection, right? Give you some basics. And there were so many men that showed up and stepped up. And a lot of those guys saved their marriages. A lot of them didn't charge a dime, didn't charge a penny, didn't ask, you know, didn't ask it anything. Some guys continued on with us, which is great, but we just did it. And my point is what I saw in that were some guys showed up big and played full out and jumped in. And those guys, not every one of them saved their marriage, but a lot of those guys did. Other guys hid in the background we're liking posts here and there. We're still active because Facebook allows you to see the stats, right? Um, but that's how 2020 was. Some of us, and this is no judgment on anybody, and everybody got, everybody had hard times in 2020, right? I did. I'm sure, I'm, I'm guessing you did. You know, I was like, fuck, I just want to get out. <laughs> you know, I just want to travel. Um, 
but some people took 2020 as an excuse to binge on Netflix, to hide out even more, to drink more, to, to do whatever it was for them to, to cope through 2020. Again, no judgment. Where other people looked at 2020 and said, okay, how can I, th- like we did, we did that whole two month thing on how not only to survive 2020, or even we, we went into preparation details of food and all kinds of things that you need for your family, but how to thrive in 2020. And I saw that in the groups, right? And I see it in this group too. Uh, you know, we're doing this live right now, and guys like Jeremy step it up, step up regularly. I'd love to see the rest of the guys really come big in this community. There's so many amazing men here. Uh, and 2020 was really, again, a magnifying glass of, of, hey, you know, as you do one thing, you do all things. And if you're, all, you're hiding in the background here, chances are you're hiding out else, elsewhere too. Um, and the guys that really showed up present for the other men, for their, their fellow men in this community of what we call the world, those are the guys that started to really repair their marriage and their relationships and their businesses. Mm. Talking about the powerful marriage reset, right? The powerful marriage reset, but I'm also talking about how that correlates with even the powerful man group that we're in live right now, right? Oh, oh yeah. For sure. It's so easy, you know, to – look, guys, the reality is if, you, if you've been around us for, you know, any amount of time now is – 250 podcast episodes, maybe, maybe approaching 300. Uh, this this group here has been very active for a few years now. If you are not happy in your marriage, then it's not because you don't know what to do. Because, you know, we put out information that, and tools that are very different to the advice of what men are given. A lot of men are given that communication is, is the key and the answer, but we don't believe it is. We believe it's connection and versus communication, hence the pride of connection that we uh, de- support the men to deploy within their marriages. And it takes guys literally from being on the brink of divorce to, you know, having sex again, quite frankly. But point I'm making is it's so easy. I say it's so easy. I'm going to tie this into the Brotherhood boardroom that we did uh, a couple of days ago. So just to give you guys some context, the guys in the Brotherhood, every quarter we do a, a Brothers boardroom, right, where all the coaches are on, we review the quarter, plan the quarter, edit, and so on. And something that the guys were sharing in, in my particular room was the idea of lowering pain threshold, right? Something, a strength for a business owner, and this is another lesson for me this year, 2020, when a strength becomes a weakness. I think it's such a great lesson. How every light side, there's a dark side and vice versa. And what we're talking about, the idea of becoming less tolerant to pain, right? Something that serves you so well as a business owner in the early days of business is having a high pain threshold, right? Because then you persevere, you test things, you try, you keep going when really it makes no sense. But you do it anyway, right? And it gets you through that startup phase and you know gets you into a good flow for the most part. Now, when that becomes a weakness is in the area of, let's say, your marriage, right? Let's say you're listening to the podcast, you're in the Facebook group. There's units within the Facebook group that contain about 15 different trainings. Great trainings. They'll really help you understand and bust certain assumptions that you may have had about how to fix your marriage. They're there for free. Just click the units, you'll see them. Podcast episodes. But some guys don't take action on these. Some guys, with almost 300 guys in the Powerful Marriage Reset, like you said, Doug, 30 days worth of support and coaching from yourself, myself, the other guys in there didn't take action. Why is that? In my opinion, one of the reasons for that is because they've become so tolerant to the pain and disconnect within the marriage, they've just kind of grown used to it and settled, quite frankly. And it's not until there is an external stressor placed upon them that they then change, i.e. the divorce papers i.e. I want a separation. And when 
ever there's an external pressure placed upon you and you are forced to change by something outside of you, it's a very difficult place to be because you're out, it's out of control, right? And at that point, the mistake a lot of guys make is the pendulum's over here focused on business for years. They realize there's a problem in the marriage. It swings all the way over to the other side, focus on the marriage. And in that position, usually they become quite needy and desperate and push the woman away. Whereas if they were just a little bit less tolerant to pain and they become more sensitive to, do you know what? Nah, this isn't who I am. No, I'm not going to do it. One guy in particular, I put seven or eight pounds on. We spoke about the idea of, you know, kind of like when you go bowling, right? You put the gutters up, the gutter lanes. You obviously don't, though, because you get a strike every time. But some people put the gutters up you know, to, to stop the ball from bouncing into the danger zone, let's call it. So the idea being is how can you set up those gutters in your own life? This guy is weighing himself regularly so that he never goes too far, never puts too much weight on without him realizing. And then becoming less tolerant to his pain so that instead of him being okay and settling with something, he allows that reflex to kick in sooner. It's like a thermostat, you know, set points. We've all heard of that before, right? Um so it creates a change faster. Same in your marriage. How long are you going to leave it before making the change? Is it going to be when you hand the divorce papers? Is it going to be when you're asked to separate? Is it going to be when you discover an emotional affair? Or is it going to be when you choose to do it? And to be fair, a lot of guys do take that approach. A lot of the guys we speak to on a daily basis do. But back to the topic here of the lesson in 2020. For me, one of the ones is about being aware of when a strength becomes a weakness and recognizing that and assessing that. Okay, this used to be a strength. Most was what I'm going to choose to replace this with. Um, and the other one, while I'm on a roll, is seasons. This, this was a great one. It again, came up in the brother's boardroom. We we're reviewing Q4 with the guys. And I'm like, I just don't feel like I've had many wins this quarter. You know, I was thriving in Q3, thriving in Q2. But Q4, I feel like I've I've kind of hit a little bit of a plateau. And anyway, they didn't start listing off all these wins. Wins. You had the, the best Christmas ever as voted for by the family. Uh, I did the biggest deadlift I've done in my life. I grew the business by X. But I said listing off all these wins. And I'm like, huh. And that sounds like you've had a really good quarter. Maybe not as accelerated as others I said yeah you're right but you know what i took i just took my foot off the gas a little bit in q4 i'm like cool why yeah. I'm like yeah i just felt like i could and felt like i needed to awesome so recognize what season you're in if you're in that season where you're just going to take your foot off the gas and take stock and let your business do work on itself and you know, just maintain stuff in fitness knowing that in q1 of the following year you're going to go again Awesome. Re embrace that. Don't beat yourself up for saying I should have set higher goals. Embrace that that's the season you've chose for that quarter and enjoy it. So, and as I was sharing, as we were sharing that conversation, which was an amazing conversation. So thank you guys. It was reminding me of so many lessons as well. Rather than trying to fight the season that you're in, you definitely create the season that you're in but recognize what you are actually creating. If you're, saying, if you're saying you should be doing something else, but really you're feeling like you want to be over here, then surrender to what you really feel like you ought to be doing and do that, whether it's in business, whether it's in seasons, whether it's in your marriage, whatever it, it, it applies to. Yeah, I think that's so true. Um, you know, something else that I picked up from 2020, and again, it, it's nothing that we don't talk about as coaches, but it came up in the boardroom and it also came up when we did, so we did, so everybody else that wasn't available for all, for alumni, the brotherhood of the inner circle, we did a three day virtual retreat, which was epic. It was such a great thing. Um, and it was how to plan 2021. So it doesn't end up like everybody else's 2020, right? Um, and in fact, it was while everybody else is falling, how do you rise? Uh, but what came up is that we noticed that when men start to struggle, it's because they're not doing their alpha rise and shine protocol. 
uh, obviously gets more advanced as the guys go through the program, but also their chart of intentional living that we teach, the coil. Uh, it was another thing that came up. And every guy in my boardroom, uh, breakout room that we did, uh, I think every guy had one of those two things was going to be their daily commitment that they knew that would just move the needle for themselves, their family, their business uh, in Q1 in 2021, right? And it's kind of that, I think as men, just as humans, but as men especially, we get comfortable, right? And when we get comfortable, we let our guard down because it's comfortable, right? People do it in workouts. Some guys never do it in workout, right? The exercise is their thing. They might do it in business, but most men do it in their relationships, right? Or their self. Okay, now things are good, right? We've saved so many of these men's marriages. Now things are good. Now I can stop doing my alpha rise and shine. Now I can stop doing the journaling practice they taught me. Now I can stop, you, know, you get the idea. And then they also realize, oh crap, that was the best thing I did, right? You know, showing up in a big way allowed me to go from what was impossible, right? Saving their marriage, saving their business, saving their family to a, what, what is now possible and is a reality for them, which is thriving. But what else is possible, right? And it's just opened up so many doors. We had guys that have never run. One guy's running a marathon in the month of January to raise awareness for, you know, something. Uh, other The guys are doing some epic stuff that they that they never thought they could ever do, right? In their 40s or whatever the story is. And the point being, Tim, to add on to what you're saying is, as men, we forget where we came from, right? We forget. It's just until we look back and go, wait a minute. The best Christmas my family has ever had, according to my wife, according to the kids, a year ago, this Christmas wouldn't have happened if I didn't make a change. Well, on many levels, you would... Many yeah. of the guys were suicidal a year ago, literally. You I know, didn't that, know came, that. That came out in the Alpha reboot, didn't it? You know, yeah. a lot of the guys you were going about this time last year were literally suicidal. They, 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 said, they said, guys, I didn't even know if I was going to make next Christmas, let alone whether the marriage was going to make it. And part of, you know, the, the, the suicidal tendencies that were coming up were tied to the breakdown in the marriage as well. Because uh, that was an affecting business. Business was taking a slump. Well, who am I if I don't have my business? You know, all cascade of, of stories. But yeah, it was scary. But you're right. They, they went on to the family saying, yeah, this has been the best Christmas ever. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, you know, as we want to wrap this up, because I think we can talk forever about 2020, because it actually did turn out to be an amazing year. I want to give, you know, the guys watching this, guys that have been with us on this journey through 2020 guys new to the powerful man, the movement that we are, um, some insights, some things they can do today. So 2021 isn't groundhog's day for 2020. You know what I'm saying? It isn't, you know, quite honestly, another shit show for a lot of guys. Um, so let's just bounce back and forth for a couple minutes here, Tim. What are some things these guys that you feel the guys can do? Can I share one more lesson? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm being mindful of the time. That's <laughs> the time. Um, the other lesson really stood out to me this year was, and it feeds into what you were just saying a moment ago. That's what sparked the, the memory of it. Was it's harder to go from good to great than it is from bad to good. Because when you're in bad, usually they've had an external stress placed upon them that's triggered them to go into action. Right. Anyone, myself, you, anyone. Boom. And then that journey from bad to good is so driven and such a necessity that it must happen. I must save the marriage. I must get my health back. I must, you know, go from bad to good. But then when things are good, it's like, eh, well, why bother? Why? Things are good. Why go to great? Things are good. You've got you've got more to risk at good than at bad because you've now got out of bad. So getting from good to great re often requires a lot more motivation because that motivation has to then come from within. Often going from good to great is really down to your standards. It's down to what you see for yourself. And part of that is, going back to one of the earlier lessons, who you surround yourself with. 
Because if you surround yourself with uh, with people who are playing at that great level and you're at good, then, you know, you're hang on a minute. They look, they're up there. That looks good up there. Now, and that's within reach, right? But it requires, just like going from bad to good, a shift in how you operate, a shift in habits, a shift in identity for the most part. Without, It's not like you have to change, but by default, by changing your habits, you act differently and you just change who you are. Uh, it's just how it works. But point being is that was a huge lesson uh, for me. You know, going from good to great requires more effort and focus than going from bad to good. So it's so true. Yeah. It's the same in sport. It's the same in all kinds of areas of life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they, they, it plays over so well. So with that said, let's wrap up with a couple things that guys can do going in from 2020 to 21. I'll start and kick it off. And I think the first thing, guys, is recognizing, you know, to get off the sidelines, right? Get off those sidelines and get into the game of your life and make sure you're really stepping up, whatever that looks like for you, right? Um, That could be a lot of things. uh, But getting into and really stepping into that, uh, whether it means taking on a new fitness routine or doing something totally different or really changing um, the way you're operating, right? At home, in your business. So taking time to reflect and then really stepping into the game and getting off the sidelines. Uh, if 2020 has taught us anything, and I've had people that were, you know, know people that were stricken with COVID, I know you did too, Tim, is life is short, right? And it's unpredictable. And so it's time now to really step in to whatever it is for you, that's your greatness, right? Don't wait for it to go bad. Try to get it good. If it's bad, raise your hand right away. Let's get it to good. But even if it's good, you deserve great. And I think 2021 gets to be that for you. Mm. Yeah. I think one thing you got to do, guys, here, you got to review your year. For sure. If you've journaled this year or if you used a coil, then go back and read through your coils. If you're anything like the guys in the Brotherhood or the Activation Method, they review their week. So instead of having to review tons of journals, they could just review 52 weekly reviews or however many they've done. I'll give them a real snapshot of the year, uh, the way that they'll do that in case you haven't done it and you want to just apply this to your year is just to look back and look at your wins. List them all. List your lessons, your main lessons you've had. And list the improvements you can make going into 2021. I think that's really important. And, you know, some of you might do this. Um, Some of you might listen to this and then, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I'll I'll get to that. But if you don't do this, then you're going to go into 2021 and chances are it's going to be the same. Maybe a little bit better than 2020, regardless of how good or bad 2020 was. Um... I think from that review, you then get to go and find people who have achieved what you want to achieve and go and be around them. However you do that, wherever you do that, go and be around them because, you know, it sounds cliche, but it's true. Success leaves clues. Um, and so much power in community. And I think that's come to a fore in 2020 more than any time previously you know, we've all missed interaction with each other which you know we're going to sort it elsewhere online and otherwise so community has become really important so um find it guys and yeah however 2020 has been for you i hope it's been a great one i hope you've learned a lot and i hope you use those lessons to propel you onto the next phase yeah, i think that's really well said i think you know the last thing I'll say, guys, here is for a lot of us as men, I know I fell into this trap early on in my marriage, is we get to go from being the nice guy in the relationship, this doesn't mean you be a jerk, to owning your power, right? What that means to you and be able to stand in your power normally. You're not going to find it in an audio book, guys. You're just not. <laughs> We've done this thousands and thousands of times. Uh, you need to experience it. Um, it doesn't have to be with us. Uh, I don't know of any other place to, to get it quite honestly. Uh, cause I certainly looked for over a decade 
really. Uh, but you know, you need to find it. You need to step into your power. There's no time to be the guy that gets stepped on in your relationship to get stepped on in other areas. And again, you can do this with grace and be an amazing man, right? Being a powerful man does not mean being a jerk. It's actually quite the opposite. Um, but once you reclaim yourself and the man that you are, you'll be shocked at how your home life changes. So uh, guys, I want that for you. I want it bad. And that's why you know we did the 30-day uh, powerful marriage reset uh, for a lot of you. And some, a lot of you guys tasted it, right? And you taste it and it tastes really friggin' good. It tastes really good. So guys, stick with that in 2021. Of course, if there's anything that we can do in, or if there's an episode you'd like to see us talk about, several of you guys have reached out. The rest of you, go ahead and go to the Facebook group and put a comment below. We are live right now. I uh, appreciate you letting Tim and I reminisce here. Uh, it's always fun with Tim moving and things that I had going on with my family. We haven't had a chance to connect as much as we as we usually do. So Tim, thank you so much for all that you've done for uh, not only me and my family, but also for men around the world and making 2020 again, not a place to survive, but a place for men around the world to really thrive. So thank you for all you've done. No, thank you, brother. Likewise, couldn't do it without you. Very true. All right, guys, <laughs> that's a wrap for us. Uh, as always, guys, if this is your first time listening to us uh, and you'd like to learn more, we do do give a free lesson or a bonus. Go over to thepowerfulman.com forward slash bonus. Pick that up. Uh, it's going to be something we just give out. We want you guys to thrive. This is a movement. If you want to join the movement and help us, you know, really reactivate men around the world, you know, reach out to us. And again, if you've been around for a little while, my request to you, if you've been around for a little bit, uh, is go ahead and leave a review on wherever you're watching this so other men like you can find this and we continue to deliver this great work. You know, we, we have families, we have things that we're doing too. We're all busy, but I'd greatly appreciate it if you could take the time to do it. Make it an amazing 2021, guys. We'll see you next time on The Powerful Man Show.